Uh, Mark Elliott, he is in damage control. He says, I, yes, I fell into a trap going on the H3 podcast. I don't know if it's a... It was not really a trap. It's like he walked into the ocean. <laughs> He slowly walked in the ocean. Yeah, and never like, came out. It's not really a trap. There was at no all. trap. Yeah, like we. Well, I mean, he it tripped, wasn't. He trapped it, yeah, himself. He yeah. trapped himself. He walked into our. He walked in. <laughs> we never misled him at all. He walked in, and we said, "Yes, come on the show." Uh, yeah, I, at the beginning of the interview, you misled him by saying like you were a supporter or whatever. Um, but that, that was after he was already here. He had every opportunity to know beforehand what, what he was signing up Never, for. ever, ever do it. Yeah, and none of, none of our communication prior to the show did we give any indication that we believed a word that he was saying. Or... I'm actually really proud of how we handled the communication. Yeah. Because I do think it was important that we did not uh, deceive him at all. And we did it. So he said, yes, I fell into a trap going on the H3 podcast. Thanks for the tag. At the end, though, Ethan was afraid to play the video of digital forensic experts talking about the evidence tampering in the U.S. versus Ranieri, as it might be too compelling. He ended up playing it, but couldn't resist mocking it. So here he is talking about how he actually had the dub. So last night I went on the H3 podcast with Ethan Klein, and boy... Did I walk into the trap of my life? Ethan called me out at the beginning. He said, you did not do your research. And no, Ethan, I did not do enough research about Ethan Klein, sir. So you definitely got me there. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up. Fair enough. I don't think we need to watch anymore. Wait, he's about to maneuver. The whole thing, they were basically playing me. You know, he was pretending to agree with me about this, these egregious you know, crimes that, that uh, the, the government committed in the case of U.S. versus Ranieri when in the, in, the, in the end, it didn't seem that he agreed with my position with anything. You know, they mocked me. They had ad hominem attacks, all this. Ad hominem? I didn't do that, did I? What's an ad hominem? Well, like it's when I attack him instead of his argument. Yeah. I didn't do that. I've never no. heard that phrase. I never really? insulted him. I feel like everyone on that side... Th the, that is one yeah, of their favorite that's phrases. That's their favorite, fresh and fit. At home, they at home. They say that every argument fresh and fit. Says yeah. That. I, feel like, I feel like we were very, very on point with our argument, key argument. Yeah. We were engaging fully. Is it ad hominem? Is that it? Yeah. Ad hominem. <sighs> pro hoc? Ad hominem? Uh-uh. Well, I don't know what pro hoc is. I just know it's another fa fallacy. <laughs> Attacking the person. This fallacy occurs when instead of addressing someone's argument or position, you irrelevantly attack the person or some aspects of the person who is making the argument. For example, would be someone saying, I'm fat and my wife is ugly, instead of addressing the fact that I, of what I said about. Them. Correct. Yeah. 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 That's a great example. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the receiving of it, end of it all the time, actually, in fact. This sort of stuff. Um, even at one point, they were claiming that I was making up my, you know, living with Tourette's for 20 years. It was incredible. But despite, you know, the craziness of the whole thing, what was amazing is that at the end, I asked Ethan to play the YouTube video showing the digital forensic experts talking about how the government uh, tampered with evidence in the case of U.S. versus Ranieri. And even with all the disagreements we had on that call, the one thing he agreed with is that he was afraid to play it because he thought it was too compelling. I think you said it was boring. It was too boring. <laughs> well, that I did said both. Yeah, no, I think you did say that at some point. I it was, was jokingly, he said, why yeah, won't was, you play it? Ironic. Actually, do you have the, this man really that fucking dense, bro? No, no. He, uh, he's, is he being He's doing facetious? what of course he's doing. He's, he's twisting it and, you know, putting his spin on it. But it's not but even I, like, okay, hold on. Yeah. Where's the timestamp where that occurred? Uh, it would be right near the end. Oh Those. my god. Bro, that's crazy. I mean, we were excited to pull it up because it's really fucking funny that Alan Dershowitz is in it. So, that's not really true that we didn't want to show it at all. <clears throat> also, one of the guys in it is like, at the FBI guy's like an election fraud freak who's... 
was it all in like Dominion voting? Yeah, I mean that that was my assumption too. Is like whenever you hear weirdos. that kind of thing, it's a bunch of weirdos. Dude. I, I watched the whole video prior uh, when I was doing the research on it, and yeah, my my impression was well, first of all, uh, a lot of the people in the video, their statements are kind of like phrased in such a way that it's kind of vague, almost as if they're responding to a hypothetical. That's what I noticed when we were watching it. They yeah. were speaking like totally. Yeah. No, I, I think specific. I think. I, I suspect it was po the question was posed in such a way like if the FBI were to have found to have falsified this metadata or whatever, would that be an egregious, you know, infraction on his civil rights? And they're like, Yeah, if that yeah, that would be a huge infraction. And then boom, that's your sound bite right there. Look how old and weird they all are. It's like a collection of just old weird people. A bunch of Pedo defenders. All right. So listen, we put poor um, Mark through the ringer. And I do feel like after everything we've been through, I do owe it to him to at least play this video so he can at least not accuse me of uh, being thinking that it's too compelling or something. So here it is, guys. I'm just going to play it. It's only two minutes long. And uh, let's just listen to what they have to say. Experts versus Keith Raniere. I worked in the FBI for about 10 years. It is clear that the photos in this case were planted there. This is the most serious tampering of evidence that I've ever seen. It's inescapable that the FBI proactively created fake evidence. Okay, that is interesting. The amount of technical ability and premeditation to perform this fraud in the case against Mr. Ramirez, I've never seen anything like this. In my 20 years experience with the FBI, I have never seen. Okay, we need to look up this guy's real because he does make a good point. This guy was a former Supreme Court Justice of Arkansas, but he is credible. Wow. No, that is an impressive uh, This dude's from the Exonerated Five. Oh. oh, this guy was an attorney for Keith Rainier. Well, that's a little, a little biased. A little biased. Out the Darius of course, who we talked about. Who else did he represent? Uh, Evans. Yeah, yeah, that's the last thing where he got it. Based on manipulation of data, that's just... He's really going on and on too. Oh, uh, he's not the most compelling. This guy's name is Bud Cummings, so that kind of disqualified him. That's one. Imagine being El Metro School, the name Bud Cummings. But he was a United States attorney. Yeah, he had a lot to prove with that name. Yeah, I was going to say, anything. They put in the work. They can't really want United States attorney He does have good, he, he's compelling to me. Yeah. Okay, so, so there, I, yeah.
<laughs> All right, I think we got uh, it. So, Mark, I think that just cured my Tourette's. Yeah. Mark, we played the whole thing uninterrupted. I will say that there was some good points, some some it's compelling stuff. So I encourage people to look into it, follow the threads. And I think I might sign up for Nexium. <laughs> right, it's got sounding pretty good. <laughs> have, have a good night. So last night I went on the H3. Oh, fuck. What a weirdo that he said. I admitted. Did you find that? Yeah, watch this timestamp. This is where he says that I had to admit that it was too Kelton Thales. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This isn't it. Is it before this? Sorry, I misunderstood with that timestamp. Two minutes. I'd be, oh, I'd be he, grateful he, if you play that at he's least. He's an advocate. Okay, cool. Yeah. If this well, here, if, I, if you can find the timestamp, I'll open it, but going to be a little messy to search live but you know um that was fun you know have, have a good night you you as well <laughs> you know we talked about how he was on theo vaughn's podcast and um on our members podcast i did yesterday i was trying to find some interesting material i was watching them speak and this part stuck out to me. I thought this was really interesting. We've been able to replicate with 10 other people with mm. Tourette's. Get into the program and get better. Yes. Wow. Well, we created a, a special thing just for people with Tourette's. And this is the crazy thing. So it took me like a year and a half to get down 90% as I was describing. Guess how fast it's been replicated. I was saying, I hate when they do this, bro. He's not your fucking pony, but... He makes some guess. He plays along. I don't know. Take one guess. He, he says, you have to guess. <laughs> he doesn't want to guess. <laughs> Nobody likes the know. guessing game because it's either too high or too low, and it takes the He's fun like, out of it. Oh, you idiot. You guessed wrong. You fucking moron. You rube. Yeah, you were way off, idiot. <laughs> way off, Way over. You ruined it. They go, how much, guess how much this costs? I don't know, $1,000. <laughs> Bro, you, you ruined wrong. it. It's only 200 <laughs> You are wrong. It's even, you know, it's rough when it's something that's impossible as well. He has <laughs> no idea. How is Theo Vaughn going to know how, <laughs> right. how, how long it took your dumbass to cure Tourette's? But <laughs> well, here it is. Seven. <clears throat> Seven. Seven what? He's doing a joke, bro. Just please. He's trying to salvage your boring ass. Don't make me pull up Subway Surfer. Seven days a week. <laughs> like seven months? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Four hours. Oh, wow. Jesus, man. I hate this. Oh, wow. <laughs> People can get rid of using this, can get rid oh, of man. Tourette's and four hours. Oh, nah. No, they can't. They really? <laughs> no. So He's so funny. I love him. <laughs> it's not by him. He's been really amicable this whole time, but even that claim made Theo Von like, yeah, what? He's yeah. like, what? <clears throat> so if you... If you were wondering if this guy's a scam artist or not, he just said he can cure people's Tourette's in four hours. Kid you not, it was probably one of... That sounds like something I would say. <laughs> I'm dead serious. So this, so I want to be really clear. It's not saying anybody can get rid of their Tourette's syndrome. I'm okay. saying people that had severe Tourette's syndrome that had tried tons of different things that wanted, that deeply wanted to get rid of it and end it for them. This to me is so obscene how he's like, it only works for people that want to get rid of it. Right. It's like, who the fuck wants Tourette's? <laughs> you didn't really want to get rid of it. It's not happening for you. You got to want it. <clears throat> you know, that... I'm cool walking around screaming the N word on buses. <laughs> it's happening. Right. Um, what the one piece of information that didn't come up during the interview that uh, I wish had was one of the victim impact statements. Here, I'll send it to you right now. Um, actually was from a victim that went through the Tourette's program. Ooh! Yeah, and described it as being like <clears throat> just horribly abusive. And, Ooh! Yeah, here. Um, oh, wait. Oh, man! You this think he'll come a... back on? <laughs> Email him. Say, hey, you want to hop on? Do it. Oh, he's not coming back. <clears throat> he might. He's desperate for any attention. Have, have a good night. Here's what. Here's one of the. 
victim impact statements. When I was told I was a candidate for participating in Nexum's Tourette study, I believed it was a legitimate medical study, and I was hopeful that this study would help my Tourette's for hours. Clearly, you did not want it. Yeah, they didn't want it. That was their problem. <clears throat> they have a victim uh, mentality. I love fucking shaking my head so hard that I have headaches, migraines. <laughs> right. But I didn't want it enough. You know? I literally giving myself, because I do this shit with my wrists, I'm literally giving myself carpal tunnel. Ooh. That's, that does suck. My fucking, uh, my nerves, if I pick something up weird, it's like so painful. Ooh. This is happening. That sucks. Just give me four hours, Mark, please, bro. I want it. In fact, there was no medical screening in advance of participation, and I was given no information about the study or its risk. No one informed me that the study, in fact, required me to take ESP, executive, that's their bullshit. That's their program, yeah. <clears throat> intensives. I had no clue that I was going to be required to take extent, expensive intensives that went from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or th That's crazy. Love or that, that as a result, I would be obligated to clear... Brofman. Is that, was that the other guy? That's that the, the, the Seagram's uh, heiress person, I believe. Oh. Claire Brofman. Let me confirm that. Yeah, that was like heavily featured in the Vow documentary. I felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders because I needed to overcome my threats in order to prove that this treatment worked. I had to urge, I had to resist the urge to tick at all costs, which is exactly what he said it wasn't. Because I was so afraid to tick and mess up the study, which they told me would also mess up a cure for Tourette's and potentially other medical conditions that Nexium wanted to cure. On two occasions while I was in Albany, Nancy and Mark threatened. Oh, we're talking about Mark now. They threatened to send me home. They each mentioned that if I don't start acting better and trying harder, I will have wasted thousands of dollars of Claire's money that she had spent on me and their medical experiment. It was scary, but I couldn't show that because showing fear means something is wrong and I need to be fixed. The study these people did did nothing for me except ruin my self-esteem, ruin my mental health, and made me hate myself. It did not cure my Tourette's in any way. What? They just didn't want it enough. That can't be. You they were just didn't want you it coward. Enough. Try harder. <clears throat> I love that actually Mark got brought into this. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I read through it and somehow my eyes just skipped right over the fact that that's Mark. Yeah, Mark's in this. He, I'm t this guy's actually pretty high up, I feel like. He's like very mm -hmm. high up involved with all these folks. All right. Have, have a good night. Have a good night. Oh, well, what a piece of shit. Damn. Himself. I really do wish we had that, but okay, we have it now. It was in there, but and it was just, also, it, the you know, whole we, thing was so free form. It just it, it was very dense. All the yeah. stuff we had too. Yeah. There was just so much. We went through quite an interview process because we're looking. You know, we were looking for very specific people that you know we thought just met a bunch of different conditions that mm -hmm. thought you know that they would be a good candidate for this. For all of those people, I would say seven, seven or eight. Two or three out of the 10 are down 70%. Wow. And the other six, seven are down 90 plus. Wow. And what was so neat is, is that once this started- So neat. It's real interesting to think after reading that victim impact statement that they were just like torturing these people. <laughs> yep. And like scaring them and brainwashing them that they can't tick or they're fucking going to be buried alive or something. I don't know. Started happening over the last uh, four years. Uh, we had this incredible filmmaker who uh, he goes, "We got to start filming this." So we started to film it. And so what was so neat is is that you know stop I, saying neat, bro. It's creeping me out. I would find someone with Tourette's, or someone would tell me about somebody with Tourette's. Yeah, and we would go through this whole process to see if they would be a good candidate. And then once we thought if we had you know a good candidate, a film crew would go out to their life, film their whole life with Tourette's. They would come work with us in Albany, mm -hmm. beat their Tourette's, and then we would go back into their life and film their life without Tourette's syndrome. Dude, he's full time in Albany. That was their main headquarters. There's this one point, I'm not going to watch the whole thing, but he goes, it's like fat people. They have to really want to lose the weight. Tourette's is the same way. I says, how's that the same? It's a neurological disorder. You could cure, it's like saying you could cure autism if people really want it. You could cure Down syndrome if people really want it. 
It's like, bro, they're mis- they're they're not. It's not fat. It's your fucking brain. Yeah, free my boys, by the way. Mark, I'm with you, brother. Free them all. <laughs> mm-hmm. Free Keith. Here's the here's the exact timestamp of. From the beginning, it's only I'm, a I'm afraid that it's compelling. Frankly, I don't want. No, I'll pl- I will play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. So these it's all it's so obviously a goof. You can see the fear in your eyes, dude. I w- I said it because I know that's what he was thinking. He was like, "This is so compelling that it's going to change everything." Two minutes. I'd be oh, I'd be he, grateful he, if you play that at least. He's an advocate. Okay, cool. Yeah. Is this alleged FBI malfeasance? Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so I guess probably don't watch this. It's two hours. Uh, but actually, Theo Vaughn has since talked about him being a Nexium scammer. So he's, yeah, this was like five years ago, man. 2018. So. Jesus Christ. Gun squad? Just trying to get... Jesus. Very inspiring to have a man who beat Tourette's and a man who beat Down syndrome in the same room talking. Anything is possible. I was just curious what people's reception was. This is a great podcast. I never heard of Mark before, but I started digging and learning about ESP program he cited. Okay, the ESP was run by Keith Ranieri, who was arrested for child trafficking. Whoops. Oops. Oopsie doopsie. Um, there's more stuff here. Uh, we got to do a break and we have a call in 10 minutes from a very special guest. We do? Yeah. Oh, fuck. That is a special guest. (laughs) Um, by the way, I just want to show a few more things here. Uh... Here is, this is the guy who made the documentary, who was like the main guy behind the vow. He, he saw it, he says, I just watched it, genius. Thank you, Mark. The good Mark. <clears throat> Takes one to know one. The good Mark. The good Mark. Light side Mark. <laughs> um, Ranieri's spokesperson, Eduardo, actually responded. Um... He has agents. He's in jail for 120 years, but Eduardo is still out here fighting the good fight. Justice advocate, bringing justice to FBI agents, crimes in the Nexium case. You can't beat darkness with darkness. So you're darkness? Or he's light? So were you saying this guy's in jail? I don't... No, 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 no. Ranieri's is in jail. This is his spokesman. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Just uh, a couple of days ago, in uh, the conversation I had with Ron Sullivan from Harvard, we were talking oh. about how... Which school? We the... Harvard. Yo! Okay, all right. Let me so listen. So you know he's trustworthy. Let me listen. Let me listen. People have facilitated the suppression of <clears throat> due process... Because we were clapping when the government cheated on someone we didn't like. Funny coincidence, yesterday Mark Elliott, who has been vocal against what the FBI did to Nexium and Keith Ranieri, Mark went on a podcast, it's called H3, I believe, and um, mm. they basically mocked him. You know, they invited him as a guest and it was all sort we of a trap. We did not invite him, which yes. He reached out to us. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense why these people hate Keith and they believe what the media says. They seem to be very hateful themselves. I'm not the media, bro. We're very Just for the record. We're very hateful. I mean, I own this whole bitch. Ain't nobody pulling strings. We do hate pedophiles, though, which... Okay, yeah, that's fair. Uh, don't be so hateful, Cab. I don't know, man. Stop being so hateful. You, <laughs> we you need, too much we need to start home. dis... We, in the words of Kanye, we need to stop dissing pedophiles all the time. Stop I, we, dissing the Nazis we all really, the time. We uh, honed in on this. It makes me think on his website what he stands for. I Human stand decency for, for even the most hated. 
the canceled, the Me Too'd men, the accused, anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers. These are not the most hated people in the world, just for the well, record. Watch it. <laughs> I love the escalation. I love, like, you know, anti-vaxxers, the arrested, just general. Just everyone. Everyone ever who's did. ever been arrested. All of them? Yep. And then Trump, Biden, LGBT people. <laughs> LGBT people. They're not the most <laughs> hated minorities. people. Minorities. Minorities. All just minorities. All minorities. Left wingers, right wingers. Someone who said the wrong thing. Someone who said or wore the wrong thing. Keith Rainier. Keith Rainier. No, no, no. Insert who's next. It's like uh, y'all are so dumb. You can't even mask what this is all about. I hate pedophiles. I dare you to put that next to your face, Mark. <laughs> Put that yeah. on the list there. Yeah, just put, put he that did, on the list. I, I mean, he clearly does stand for pedophiles if he's running. He's literally for, standing for <clears> yeah. What's interesting is he says the most hated and then put like basically. I think almost everyone in the country would fall into one of those. Categories. Yeah, it, totally re redeemable, uh, debatable stuff. But like the one thing that everybody agrees on is like child predators and he didn't actually put that on that the was list, which is what keith well but mark's for. name was on or uh keith's name was yeah. on there so yeah. by proxy so here is uh, eduardo and they started doing what i was discussing with ron they started mocking and you know they're seeing evidence of uh uh, the FBI cheating. They're seeing the best cyber experts in the world saying, "Dude, there's lit there's literally no evidence. You showed no evidence. It's just a bunch of talking heads being like, can you believe how corrupt the FBI is? There's no evidence. What are you guys talking about? Show me evidence. All you go is, oh, the timestamp was fuck it. That metadata was changed. Okay, show it to me. And also, I don't care because he did a lot of other shit other than that hard drive. Saying it. And they're uh, mocking them, cheering at the destruction of the Republic, so to speak. Huh? So it was unfortunate to find that that's what's going on, as we hypothesized. Again, I believe that this is the devil turning around on us. So brave from Mark Elliott and good job. <laughs> good yeah, job. He nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely. This is good, a good job. Y'all need better spokesmen, man. <laughs> Next team is good nothing work. without Keith. You guys need a well, cult leader. Look at the uh, replies to see how uh, this message was uh, received. Let's see. Matt Gates from Wish. <laughs> <laughs> this you, bro? What's wrong with this? I don't know. Let's see. More replies. Um, oh, look. Another Ranieri hanger on who needs to be deprogrammed. Try me. Try me. <laughs> what does that mean? What are we trying? Deprogramming him, I guess. What's your name? He goes, try deprogramming you? No, that position is better left for medical professionals. He goes, what's your name? Bro's trying to recruit in Twitter replies. What's your name? <laughs> wow. He goes, I don't divulge personal information to cult members. Sorry. You just divulged others' info publicly? I suspected it. Another anonymous chicken. He's really in the weeds here. Your boy Mark got owned. Don't know why you'd cover for someone who's obviously racist. Racist? I don't know why they... Well, if you believe that he was faking Tourette's to say the N-word, I guess you could say he's uh, racist. Yeah, I, I don't know. Supposedly, he supported, uh, supported Kanye when he was being canceled. Because of he, course, he's he the can, he's he's canceled, he, and therefore he stands by with the default everybody. position of every single person is to support now him. what the arrested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So we love them. He also tweeted something out. If you want to call in, uh, dude, Eduardo, do you want to call in? Like genuinely, come <laughs> in. You know who we are now. It's not a trap. Call in, Eduardo. Call in. I dare you to call in. Somebody reach out to Eduardo. You can call him right now. It's live. <laughs> I don't know. By the time this comes back around to him, we'll probably be over this whole thing. Just like Ron Sullivan explained a few days ago, the podcast H3 clapped at government corruption and mocked Mark Elliott for trying to expose it. Yep. Hmm. What is this? We as a people. What the fuck is all this crap? It's all so like weird, <laughs> oh, seedy shit. Yeah. Like it's all been recorded on a webcam. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying we'll about that that compilation they put together. It was all on Zoom. It really just shit. made me wonder if they like called a lawyer to ask some legal questions <clears throat> and just recorded it and put that on there. Hundred yeah. percent. Um. Yeah, so that was all pretty interesting. 
I was posted in Colt Watch, apparently. This is, oh, there's, I wanted to give a crossover shout out over at the Nexium case. They have longed for someone to call out Mark Elliott's bullshit claim that Tourette's can be cured. Ranieri didn't discover shit. It's a well-known uh, that shame and abuse can force people to hide their traits. I didn't know that. Shame and abuse? Well, it sounds like that's what they were doing. But anyway... Um, Based on that victim <clears throat> statement, yeah. It sounded like they were like threat. Like if you don't... <laughs> you're you ruining don't, everything. You're ruining our lives if you don't cure your Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there it is. Lots of going on there. Uh, a lot of people were saying... Maybe this is why Mark thought I was pro Andrew Tate. And he did address his email to Dear H3 Podcast Highlights. <laughs> this was his research. Oopsie. Why is it so windy outside, bro? What the fuck's going on? Well, there's a giant storm blowing in in L.A. It's supposed to rain super... You know, it's supposed to potentially snow in L.A. over the next few days. Huh? But it Seriously? sounds like fucking Crazy. Grand Theft Auto outside. Well, I know. All I hear <laughs> well, yeah, is like mad sirens, <laughs> and then the the building is like shaking from wind. It's given, right? It's the biggest trick in the, of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you say, Kim. Oh, it's going to start raining today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's like blizzard warnings in L.A. County right now. Which really is very unusual. Yeah. Huh. Oh, shit. Okay. So I was wrong about Andrew Tate, and then there's another one here. Why I changed my mind on Andrew Tate. Clearly did not <laughs> click the videos, but... Uh, That's so funny. Clickbaiting backfired on it in his case. 